how about you? I'm Hank. Man, I have been in your shoes, and I'm. it's crazy the anticipation you get because the period of time may be one day to one month. It's crazy how this waiting for a tractor just kind of gets at you, right? But there's things that you can do while you're waiting for your new tractor to be delivered. Let's talk about five things that you can do while you're waiting for your new tractor to be delivered. Let's get started. So you're sitting there and you're like, man, I just can't wait. You're sitting there, you're looking at your clock, you're looking at your watch. The things are just moving so slow. I mean, it's like molasses, right? And you're thinking to myself, are they ever going to call? Are they ever going to let me know my tractor's in? And then one day you finally get that phone call and you finally get to notice that, hey, your tractor's on its way and you get excited and stuff, but are you prepared for that tractor to be delivered? Because they're loading that tractor up and they're coming to your house with it, whether you're ready for it or not. <laughs> so you got to be ready for it. So let's talk about the number one thing that you can do to get ready. And let me say this, it's not in any particular order, okay? One thing you can do of the five is you can go ahead and buy your grease gun. That is super important for you to be able to have that grease gun ready because grease is the blood of the vehicle. Grease, oil, hydraulic fluid, all that stuff makes the, makes the tractor run right. And so you're going to need to be ready by having that grease gun available. Buy a battery powered grease gun. I have a DeWalt. I love it. I'll leave the link to it in the, the Amazon link below. If you want to buy it, perfect. If not, go get your Milwaukee, go get your Harbor Freight, go get your whatever. Get a battery powered grease gun because what you need to do is you need to be ready to put grease on this thing every eight hours. I personally grease mine about every other use. I used to grease it every use, but I, that's a little, I guess a little extreme, but now I'm serious. I grease mine about every other use. I'm putting grease in it. So not only do you want to buy a grease gun, you want to buy tubes of grease. Now this gets into the old argument about do I which which grease do I need? Which one? <sighs> Let me tell you, I'm in the camp where I don't think it matters. I think what matters is you grease it, right? Because if you keep it greased, then you're going to recirculate that grease in there, or not recirculate. You're going to push that old grease out. The new grease gets in. I don't care what kind of grease it is. I've got some Lucas Red and Tacky. I've got some multi-purpose. I got some Liquid Wrench multi-purpose grease. I've got some heavy-duty grease from some off-brand or whatever. The Rule King. I'm just buying tubes of grease because now I'm waiting on my tractor. I know that every six to eight hours. I'm putting grease in this thing, right? The owner's manual tells you how often it needs to be greased. So buy a battery powered grease gun. And on the end of my grease gun, I put a lock and lube on it. There's a different variations of it out there. There's some Chinese brands. There's the lock and lube. There's some other off brands or whatever. I like the lock and lube brand. Uh, it has not let me down. I've been using it for about I want to say four years now, three and a half, four years, I've been using the Lock and Lou brand, not sponsored by them. It, it helps. It definitely helps. So get you a grease gun while you're waiting because you're going to be happy that you did because you're going to start greasing this thing after the second, third day of it. Pow, 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 put that grease in there and get it loaded up, right? So that takes me to point number two, which I kind of touched on in point number one. Let's talk about the second thing you need to do while you're waiting for your new tractor to be delivered. The second thing you need to do is read the owner's manual. And you'll be like, what? how can I read the owner's manual when I don't even have the, the tractor yet? You can download copies, PDF versions of the owner's manual online. So get a hold of the owner's manual. Or if you have a dealer, you know, the dealer that you're buying the tractor through, ask them if you can get an owner's manual from it. Now your tractor will come with an owner's manual. So get the owner's manual familiarize yourself with it because in there it's going to talk about how to do the regen process if applicable it's going to talk about the buttons and controls and the levers and all this stuff and how to operate them it's going to talk about the maintenance schedule how many hours do i need you know everybody's going to do the first 50 hour service so how what do i need to do what do i need to do at 100 hours 150 hours 200 hours that is all in your owner's manual and it saves you a lot of headache if you understand what each of the symbols are in the, in the, on the dash, how to operate the levers and things like that. I have been in many, many Facebook groups, online forums, things like that, where people, you know, they sh they'll get a picture of, a, uh, of an icon on the dash and they'll be like, what's this picture mean? 
it's in your owner's manual, you know? So familiarize yourself with the owner's manual and you won't have these questions. Now, if your tractor, if you bought it used and you're not waiting for it, <laughs> if you're not waiting for the dealer to deliver it, then you might maybe, maybe don't, maybe, maybe not have an owner's manual, but you can at least get online and get an owner's manual for that particular tractor, even if you buy a used one. If you buy a new one, it's gonna come with an operator's manual or owner's manual. Learn what those symbols mean. Learn what the glow plug symbol looks like. Learn what the water fuel separator symbol looks like. Learn what the DPF symbol, looks, the regen symbol looks like. Learn what the overheat, the temperature gauge uh, warning light looks like. Those are things that you need to familiarize yourself with. And if you've got a week, a month, whatever, while you're waiting, just breeze through that owner's manual and it'll answer a lot of questions for you concerning the operation and the uh, displays and all that stuff of your new tractor. So I think that's the second thing that you need to do while you're waiting. There's three more things I wanna talk about while you're waiting for your new tractor to be delivered. So let's jump into number three right now. I'm assuming that if you bought a new tractor, you probably bought an implement to go with it. A bush hog, a, a post hole digger, pallet forks, box blade, whatever. If you bought a rotary cutter, or if you bought a post hole digger or an auger, anything, or maybe a rototiller, something that is PTO driven, then you have an opportunity to buy something that has a slip clutch or a shear pin in it. Now, if you hook up a three point implement to your tractor, you're gonna need lynch pins or cotter pins that go in there. So my advice to you, while you're waiting for your tractor to be delivered, go buy pins. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to buy some pins, different pins and different sizes, things of that nature. Might wanna get some cotter pins while you're at it. So they have a couple of lynch, linkage parts and things like that. You're gonna need some of this stuff for sure. If you're gonna buy something that needs a shear bolt, get some shear bolts. I mean, buy like 24 of them, right? I don't know, some random number, 24. Buy a lot of pins and shear bolts, and and you're gonna you're gonna see you're gonna need it for something, right? You're gonna you're gonna be taking out the part that holds. You're gonna be taking out the pin that holds the three point implement on, and you're gonna take that pin out. You're gonna set it to the side, or you're gonna set it on the back fender here, and you're gonna drive off and you're gonna forget it. So make sure you have pins, lynch pins, cotter pins, um, the T-handle the T handle bolts, the, and then the shear bolts for your implement. I highly recommend implements that have slip clutches. A, they're, they're higher quality. B, they're, they're easier on the machine, uh, and you don't have to get off and save you. They're more efficient, in my opinion. But if you bought one that has a shear bolt in it, I'm telling you, you're gonna to need to buy. Find out what the shear bolt is and go buy you a bunch of them. Or we say down here in the South, go buy you a mess of them <laughs> because you're gonna break something. The first time you dig a hole with your auger, boom, you're gonna hit a, you're gonna hit a root. It's gonna break your shear pin. Uh, you're gonna be out there using your rotary cutter, or your brush hog, your bush hog, and you're gonna hit a stump. Something is gonna stop, it's a shear pin for a reason, right? It's gonna protect your implement and the tractor's PTO system, the, the shaft for your PTO system. I'm telling you, while you're waiting, go get an assortment of pins, shear bolts, those things, it's super important. So you have those ready, because what happens when you, what happens when you get your new, your new toy, right? Your new tractor, what happens? You wanna go use it. And so what happens if you have a rotary cutter and it's got a shear bolt in it, and yeah, oh man, I can't wait. I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna get this thing bush hogged and it's gonna be awesome. Brrr, five minutes later, you break a shear bolt. You don't have anything to replace it with. You've used your brush cutter for five minutes and now you can't use it until you go to the store and buy a shear bolt. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's deflating. <laughs> so uh, have that stuff on hand. Keep them in your inside. You know, if, you, if your tractor has a toolbox, keep them in the toolbox. If it's got a little cubby hole like or mine does in here, I keep them in the cubby compartment inside the tractor. I, you just got to have them available because you're going to lose your pins and you're going to break your shear bolts. So have them on hand. And that's going to take care of the third thing you need to do while you're waiting on your tractor to be delivered. Two more, so stick around because we're going to talk about number four and number five right now. Hey, guess what? You're watching this video on YouTube, right? That's number four. <laughs> watch videos, especially watch videos on 50-hour services. So if you're buying a tractor brand new, 
you're going to put 50 hours on it before you know it. It's going to be crazy. And you're going to need to do that first 50 hour service before you, you're like, holy cow, have I got 50 hours on this thing already? Yeah, you do, because you bought the tractor to use, not to sit in your garage and, and you know look pretty beside your, your SUV. So watch videos of the 50 hour service on your particular tractor and get familiar with that process. What kind of oil are you gonna use? What kind of filters are you gonna use? Now, obviously your manufacturer will have recommendations or specifications on what oil, what filters, what fluids to use. So go in accordance with what your owner's manual says or what your manufacturer says, cause that's really the most important part. But you look and you, you say, well, you know what, man? I've been using Amsoil a long time. I've been using Lucas a long time. Well, that's fine uh, if it meets or exceeds your manufacturer's uh, recommendations or whatever. I personally, I'm OEM for my motor oil, my hydraulic filters, my oil filters, and my hydraulic fluid until my warranty expires. Once the warranty is uh, no longer in play, then I can switch to some of the stuff from different other manufa from other manufacturers. Uh, does it make a difference or not? I'm not sure. Uh, leave a comment below and let me know if that's the truth. You know, if I did, if I used a Wix filter instead of a, a TYM filter, does that void my warranty? I've read different things on, and different people will you ask ten different people and they get ten different answers, as they say. So just think about that. But what you need to do is you need to familiarize yourself with what you're going to do at the 50-hour service, or even better. Can you negotiate a 50 hour service in the price of the tractor? So when you talk to your dealer and you're thinking about, hey, I want loaded tires. I want you know these implements to be financed with it. Can they get your tractor, come and pick your tractor up, take it to the shop, do the 50 hour service and bring the tractor back all you know, in, in exchange for you buying the tractor? Some, some dealers, I don't know if a dealer would be open to do that, but hey, it's a bargaining chip, right? But hey, I'll pay you X amount of dollars for this tractor if you throw in the first 50 hour service. Maybe they'll say yeah, maybe they'll say no, but all they, you know, it, it won't hurt, to, it won't hurt at, to ask, you know what I mean? So ask your dealer if they'll throw in the first 50 hour service and then you ain't gotta worry about it. If they say no, you gotta worry about it. It's not hard to do. I've done 50 hour services on all my tractors myself. And it's it, there, it's a breeze to operators. Remember we talked about the owner's manual, familiarizing yourself with that. That's, uh, that's all that stuff's gonna be in there. All these videos on YouTube will show you, you know, which fluids to drain, which filters to change. And it, it's, it's really super simple. It's, it's, you don't have to be mechanically inclined to do a 50 hour service. You just have to make sure you buy the right products to put in there, the consumables that you're replacing, you know, make sure that it meets or exceeds that, that manufacturer's requirement, or it may you potentially, I don't know for sure, but potentially could uh, void your warranty. So have that discussion with your dealer and while you're waiting, be familiar with it because it's coming up quick. I'm telling you, you go, you look down at your watch, you're like, wow, it's 50 hours. Or you go to crank, you jump in your tractor one day, and you turn the key on, and you look at the hour meter, and you're like 46 hours. You're like, wow, man, after today, I got to do my first, my first 50 hours. I just bought this thing home, you know, two weeks ago, five weeks ago. So I think it's really, really important while you're waiting on your tractor to get familiar with the operator's manual, buy those shear bolts and pins. Um, get a grease gun, and then familiarize yourself with the 50 hour service. But there's one more thing that I think while you're waiting, cause you can take advantage, take advantage of all this time while you're waiting. Because uh, if, if you're just sitting there idle, when your tractor, it's like jumping in the deep end of the pool, right? Some people prefer that, but uh, are drinking from a fire hose. Don't do that. Use your time wisely. And while you're waiting, get those things done as well as number five. Let's talk about the fifth thing that you should do while you're waiting on your tractor to be delivered. The fifth thing that I think you need to do while you're waiting is go ahead and get you an assortment of hand tools. Ball, ping, hammer, that's gonna help you get some pins out. If you got your three-point hits, I'm telling you, the worst part about owning a tractor is hooking up a three-point implement. It's the worst part. And a crescent wrench. I'm a huge fan of a crescent wrench. If you've seen any other of my videos where I do other than tractor work, you know that I love the crescent wrench. Man, I'm telling you, adjustable wrench. That's a left-handed metric one. You can They come in right-handed standard as well. <laughs> I love that joke. But anyway, it's important that you have an assortment of hand tools, right? Because you're gonna be out in the field and you're gonna notice that a, a lug nut has come loose or you're gonna notice the, uh, a bolt for your loader has come loose, something, right? Because 
We talked about, you know, how a shear bolt breaks. Well, uh, there you go. For a shear bolt, you're going to need two adjustable wrenches or the exact fitting for that shear bolt. So have those wrenches, those open end wrenches available because as you get out in the field and you start working, things happen. And you're going to see that maybe you look down and a hose has come off somewhere. So you need a screwdriver to put the hose clamp back on. So keep an assortment of hand tools and, and hose clamps. Things like that happen. Right, it's uh, these things don't have suspension on them. It's a rough ride. You're going to be bouncing over stuff. You're going to be working hard. You're going to be paying attention to the task that you have on hand. I've got to get this field bush hogged. I've got to get this road box blade. I've got to get this all this fence line put in with this post hole digger. Things happen, and you're going to be you're going to be consumed by the task. But you have to have situational awareness of what else is going on in the tractor. And how do you do that? You look around, you get off every 20, 30 minutes, and you just kind of walk around your tractor. You've got to keep your air cleaner filled, you know, or air cleaner cleaned. So you're going to need hand tools to, to be with you. So buy a small toolbox. If your tractor does not come with a small toolbox, keep a small toolbox of an adjustable wrench, a ball peen hammer, screwdrivers, a couple open end wrenches that you're going to need. A spud wrench is a good thing to have. So, I mean, it's, it's important that you have that stuff immediately available on your tractor so that when something happens in the field, you ain't got to go back to the shop and get those tools. You can take care of it right away with the tools that you have on hand. A small chain. I keep a small chain in my tractor. So this small chain sits right here. I keep it in my tractor in case I need to run it around my bucket and, and pick something up with it or something. So... Uh, I keep an extra hook in there. There's just, I mean, there's all kinds of things that you have to think about. And you can have these things ready before your tractor even gets there. That's the beauty of it. You know, while you're waiting, boom, grab your chains, grab your adjustable wrench, your screwdrivers, and you are ready to go. As soon as that tractor gets there from your dealer, and if, if he delivers it or he or she delivers it, as soon as he pulls it off the trailer, man, you're cooking with gas, right? Now, even if you go get it and then you bring it home and you take it off your own trailer, man, you're ready to go. And so uh, most people are going to want to pick their trailer up early in the morning. So when they get home, they get, <laughs> they're ready to go, right? Hopefully, uh, you know, you don't have to wait too long. Hopefully that you can have the tractor delivered that same day or within a week or so. And the wait doesn't kill you because it is crazy waiting on a tractor because you're like, man, I spent all this money. I'm so excited. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And what happens is, sometimes what happens, and now listen to me, sometimes what happens is you buy a tractor and it's May 1st and they say, okay, we're going to have it to you June 1st. You start getting on those Facebook groups. You start getting on those online forums and you start reading, oh, the John Deere uh, 1025 is, oh, it's a piece of junk, man. I've had the axle brake on it or I had the loader, the loader arm broke on my Coyote or whatever, you know, and you're like, uh, did I make the right decision? You did. You made the right decision. Every tractor brand has a, a lemon or two, right? Every, every now and again, you get, get a tractor that was built on Friday afternoon before a three-day holiday, you know, three-day break. <laughs> the guy just want to get out of there. It happens across the board. But while you're waiting, don't fool yourself into thinking you made a bad decision because you didn't. You made a good decision. You bought a tractor, and a tractor is a good thing to have on your property, a good thing to have on your farm. So just be happy, but be prepared when it gets there because there's a lot of things you can do to make the arrival of your new addition a lot easier and you can start playing with it as soon as you, as soon as you get it home, start working with it. It's going to be awesome. Hey, listen, I hope you found this information useful. I hope you found it educational. If you like these kind of videos, I got another one right here. You can check it out. Go take a look and watch it. I appreciate you guys. Take care. God bless you guys.